All right, so here we go. You're probably not going to need the extra microphones, all that sort of stuff, so I'll kind of stand in front. Um, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Gary Gerard. I am currently the academic coordinator for the BIMN Integrated Practice Program at Fanshawe College. We'll explain what that is, and that's really FBIM, but don't pause, say it quickly together, please. Because uh, there are other centers, other places in the world that they're saying FBIM, okay? Uh, we are now looking at uh, Fanshawe BIM, and we'll have a conversation about that. I also teach in the Architectural Technology Program and the BIM and Integrated Practice Program. Uh, we've got, let's see, we've got alumni back there, we've got current students back there, we've got business partners that are hiring our students, we've got colleagues, everybody in the room is pretty much part of this FBIM right now, okay? Uh, I'm going to take you on a short little journey as quickly as I can. My current students are laughing. My alumni students are laughing. He, does, he doesn't talk quickly at anything. I teach nine hours a week. i got to fill that time, okay? Um, that's just one studio class. So we're going we're, we're gonna to see if this is possible to kind of move ahead. So welcome to Fanshawe, okay? Um, I realize we're a long way from campus. We're only about 10 minutes down the road, but we are now in... Um, a big part of what FBIM is, um, it's the evolution of our sector, A, E, and C. Architects, raise your hand. Engineers, raise your hand. Contractors, raise your hands. Subconsultants, IT people, perfect. Okay, and we're just tipping, we're just tipping it off right now. So this is where we're gonna start. We're gonna start with FBIM right here, okay? Um, generally, welcome message. Welcome to one of the first buildings that I'm aware of. Um, our facilities people, which I think are also in the room, will be able to tell me whether or not there's ever been an BIM deliverable at Fanshawe. I'm unaware of any at this point. So, interestingly enough, the next present presentation by Ellis Dawn will actually talk about how BIM did show up on this building, even though maybe it wasn't a contractual obligation and I'll leave that to those guys. So FBIM welcome, that's it. FBIM defined, quickly put, it's just an acronym, people. All we are is, we're Fanshawe BIM. We should have made up t-shirts, should have made up t-shirts, we could have handed those out. Christmas season isn't for another few weeks, so we'll have to wait on those. So what is FBIM? FBIM is just what we're BIMing at Fanshawe, and we're BIMing in multiple areas right now. We're BIMing all across the Donald J. Smith School of Building Technology. Architectural technology programs, construction engineering technology programs, civil engineering technology programs, postgraduate certificate programs in construction project management, and BIM and integrated practice. We are evolving to a BIM-based educational institution. We're doing our best. We'll talk about where it came from as well. BIM Participation and Association. This is our first big CAN BIM opportunity. Okay, and this started what? Uh, March of this year? This conversation ultimately happened, I don't even remember why we got on the phone, but ultimately we got to here and we set this date within two hours. Uh, yeah, probably within two hours of our first conversation, which is a big deal. We changed the venue twice, um, but we didn't know if the building was gonna be ready, but it did come out on time, so it was good. So we'll talk about where FBIM could potentially go with participation and associations. We have a large number of students right now, um, over 1,000 that are you know, getting A, A, E, and C training, and they're getting some exposure to what we're talking about here. Okay, We're talking about BIMing the society. Um, I would say our local market might be a little bit behind some other areas, but that's okay, because I think we can catch up with the tools, the skills, and the people we're starting to produce in this overall thing. By the way, no notes, making it up as I go. So BIM programs and adoption, I'll tell you what we offer, okay? I'll show you um, where and what we're gonna go. I'll tell you, you know, some of our big beliefs in BIM are that it's only gonna get bigger. I don't think there's anybody um, in the international market that hasn't already had this conversation. Some students have heard my lectures online and in the class about the world is changing. Um, Mike McLean, pretty much assessed where we were. Well, let's be, let's have a quick little conversation about where we're going. And our big belief at Fanshawe is BIM's a big part of it. We built a whole postgraduate certificate program. We want graduate level students, both from diplomas and degrees, to ultimately have some skills that maybe aren't coming to the market. 
We are one of three participating BIM programs in the entire province. Oh, the province yes. Yeah, in the province, so George Brown, which Pietro has spoken to, um, our friends at Algonquin as well, and us, other than that, I think there might be some micro classes, but we're talking programs and we're one of three. And you know, that covers Ontario because it's coming. I don't believe there's any question that it's coming. So, and we'll talk about, you know, the additional development. We're trying to give you some BIM enabled students. Are they experts at this point? No. Could they have a thirst for that in the future? Yes. Are we seeing case studies day by day of people that never had it and that are now getting it? Yes, they are. And there's some in this room that have actually been tasked with this role to move the current sector ahead. And they might be recent graduates, two, three, one year out of a postgraduate certificate program or two years out of a diploma program, something like that. It's a big change for an industry that moved relatively slowly. So that's our BIM big vision. How did we get here? The best way you can assess where you are is to figure out where you were. And it was this, and I'll tell you, the BIM and Integrated Practice Program didn't exist more than mm, it was an idea a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago. It was a conversation, okay? We were asked, and some people, I think this is your quote from 2011 from the Program Advisory Committee. Don't quote me on that. We were asked in 2011 as an architectural program team to introduce Revit. Okay, we were asked to introduce Revit as a program delivery in the studio class to give these students a simulation model on how to use Revit to do that. Okay, I think we all agree that BIM and Revit, although um, they work together, aren't the exact same thing, which is why we have a postgraduate certificate program. Okay. Oh, going back one more. Okay, it was about mm, 2000, late 2015, might even be 2016 that the program or the colleges decided that we needed to grow and we needed to expand curriculum. We needed to offer new programs that were on emerging technologies, innovative ways to actually compete better, to find more students and to offer job skills to the next wave of students. BIM and Integrated Practice was born based on that statement. And it was a casual conversation, and it was a casual conversation with our previous chair at the time. Okay. So that's really where we were. Two statements, two statements drove us into all this stuff. And this is kind of the way that we kind of look at it within the School of Building Technology. Okay. We talk about buildings. A lot of you are graduates of the programs that are offered by the Donald J. Smith School of Building Technology. You're all working for local consultants, okay? The London Regional event is a big deal for us because London as a center, and this might be my humble opinion, could be further ahead than we might ultimately be at this current point in time, okay? We wanna talk about engineering and instruction and we wanna be part of that educational piece, okay? We really want to work hard to be part of that educational piece. And we're going to rely on you, past students, alumni, network groups, consultants. We have a better role or better opportunity now than ever to actually proceed towards better education in BIM. Okay? And this is you know, kind of within our walls. And we've, we're living, we're sitting in a case study of where BIM may actually help us out. And we're going towards 3D and 4D and 5D. And some people are going to say, hey, are you doing 7D? And we're not. Okay, we're not there yet. We're still, still educating to the third and fourth dimensions of construction. Okay. And how are we offering that? BIM and Integrated Practice is open to architects, engineers, and construction management types, degrees, and diplomas because we're doing applied theory. We're talking theory of BIM, but we're also talking about how to actually physically do it. Okay? It's not just words on paper, it's a real practical approach to that. And every one of these things here, owners and management, everybody has a responsibility in the FBIM. Okay? Everybody has a responsibility in FBIM. So how are we going? Well, ultimately this is a quick listing of the types of courses that are BIM or BIM enabled at Fanshawe already. And I'll tell you we're behind. But all in all, I'm comfortable with it at this point. We have a growth strategy. So you'll notice four distinct programs listed here. 
ATY is the architectural technology folks. The CEY2 is a civil engineering technology program. The CMY, which is the construction engineering technology dash management program. And the BIM2 postgraduate. We also have a CPJ program. Um, I kind of ran out of space on my chart, so I kind of emphasize the ones that are doing BIM. And you'll notice from the stats on the right, when we did it, how we did it, and where we got to in a really short period of time. I'll tell you right now that the architectural technology program has four dedicated courses alone that use BIM technologies, specifically Revit, because uh, we are an Autodesk institution. And we're using that for um, our advanced level design and project studios in level five and level six fully, okay? Uh, we're not cutting anything in that. We've got introduction to Revit 1, we've got introduction to Revit 2, uh, and we teach those in second year. So if you're currently starting to think about hiring students and you do have a BIM background and you have a big BIM push, maybe we have co-op students or potential grads that already have some of that foundational stuff that you want. Be aware of that. Construction management technologies is definitely coming on. There's a massive revamp that could potentially be coming to some of the curriculum inside that. Uh, the civil engineering technology, our engineering arm of that DJS, is actually presenting and introducing um, specifically BIM for structural engineering. So we've got the students that we're starting to hear are in demand. We're starting to educate them at the level and we'd like your help to continue that. Which also leads us to uh, the BIM 2 program. We're currently recruiting for program advisory committee members, which are a small group of people that would be able to advise, review the content of the curriculum, and tell us whether or not we're going the right way. And we are actively recruiting those positions, probably start up in the spring. So if you had a general interest on where BIM might go in the future, and you want to be part of the educational give back, please contact us about that. Generally, two-level program, okay, two-level program, eight months. We are taking some people that don't know what BIM stands for on the first day of classes, and we are ultimately giving them all these specific BIM-related things. Nine out of 10 of those courses, nine out of 10 of those courses are directly BIM content, and only BIM content. You'll see BIM software integration, think Navisworks. You'll see BIM management one and two, think BIM execution plans or project execution plans. Think about um, integrated practice for AEC sector. This is where we kind of branch off a little bit and we move into uh, the integrated nature of what maybe the future of design will be, where we collaborate longer and better as subconsultants. We let experts do expert work. We teach some of the foundational principles of IPD in that course which is only mm, 12 or so projects in all of Canada right now, and probably a few hundred in the States. Um, currently, I think I just read two articles in the last two weeks about um, some major educational institutions using IPD for delivery, just what, an hour and 40 minutes away. Um, the Conestoga campus at Milton, my understanding will be an IPD delivery. So if, um, that happens to be one of the methods you look to be going. Um, we have some students that might have a foundational knowledge on what that process might be. So where do we want to go? And this will be my shortest lecture ever. So where do we want, ultimately want to go? So what that is right there is that's a quick little 3D scan of our construction shop. So if anybody's ever been to T building at Fanshawe College and stood in the carpentry room where they do all the carpentry training, that's the center of the floor and we had it scanned up. Where do we want to go with it? Well, we want to be able to offer students an educational opportunity to actually do some of that scanning and do it in an educational format before they get out to the field and they start to scan up these spaces. I noticed that SolidCAD was already scanning up the room, correct me if I'm wrong. So 3D technology is here. We're looking to introduce that to our students as well. So increased collaboration and project management. Um, we've got some conversations. We run a capstone course in level two of our BIM and integrated practice. And we give a mock scenario, a project scenario, where multidisciplinary teams 
with the assistance of Dr. Delavar up there. They will facilitate the design, construction documentation, some of the early inception phases of the IPD. We will actually walk our students through that. They'll work in multidisciplinary teams by sharing and linking models and doing whatever we can to build stuff in the cloud and take it down from the cloud and share one good model, not 18 decent models. I'm not gonna say bad, I'm not gonna say bad. So that's where we're going with increased collaboration and management, okay? We wanna to move towards digital design and construction, more opportunities, AR, VR, so augmented realities. How can we use some of these models we have and walk through them virtually? How can we present them to owners and clients and fictitious clients and show them before why they you know, need to raise the roof, for lack of a better term, because they're hitting their heads on the sprinkler pipes and the mechanical pipes. We're asking our students to do that. We're asking our students to do that in ATY, which is the Architectural Technology Program, and the BIM program. We're looking to get towards reality capture as well, okay? Do I anticipate this is happening tomorrow? No. Do I anticipate it could happen in the next year and a bit? I'm definitely hoping so, okay? We wanna be able to scan up. Our campus currently has no digitization, as best as I can tell, with regards to reality capture. Our ultimate goal, potentially, as a curriculum delivery would be to have student groups ultimately walk around our campus and record our thing, and then start to use that information to develop additional projects. So virtual presentation. We would love, in a perfect world, we would love in a perfect world to, us, to essentially get to some sort of um, immersive studio that we could literally live in this 3D augmented VR reality world and have that on campus for us. Um, there are institutions such as George Brown that we are extremely jealous of because they actually have that BIM aquarium. BIM aquarium? BIM aquarium? Visionarium, sorry, I was close. Um, you know, and, and the BIM cave, I've heard it called the BIM cave too, and it's, and it's amazing, it is amazing. And we'd like to be part of that too. And uh, with the digitization of construction and architecture and engineering that we're going through, being able to present those tools to an owner is a big deal, okay? Lastly, what we're trying to do is give you some BIM-enabled people. Are they gonna be experts coming out? I'm not gonna promise you that. Are we gonna have some that are better than others? That's obvious. But what we're trying to do is give them a BIM-based knowledge. I could tell you there's people in the room, there's people that have walked across the stage at Fanshawe in the last six months that didn't know what BIM stood for that have now graduated and are moving into managerial positions with companies, you know, five, 10 minutes down the road, two hours down the road, three hours down the road. And that's what FBIM is. So thanks to CanBIM, thanks to Pietro, thanks to Jerry, thanks to Paul. Thanks for joining us here, it was a good time.